in front of the TV by now. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Rocky? <laughs> Nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry if it's late. Right, what's good? That was, that was so the is this a time slot they gave me? <laughs> is this a, a non-camera? Uh, interview. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a on screen. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a podcast. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I mean, they are gonna watch the you know us all video. It's it's a Zoom <laughs> interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go. Okay. What you got? Uh, uh, well, I wanted to say like our our site grew is 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 a horror site, and I noticed you've done quite a few horror films, and uh, I wanted to 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 ask you like what your top five favorite horror movies of all time are. Of all time. Yeah. I don't. You know, it's funny about horror. I'm not a, I don't like being frightened. Oh, okay. I'm uh, I'm, I, I don't actually go out of my way to watch horror movies, um, which may sound wussy. I'm sorry, <laughs> but, that's, but that's the case. I get, uh, I get scared and I can never understand like, why does, you know, what's the thrill you want to get, you want someone to scare the crap out of you. Um, but I used to get knocked out by movies like The Exorcist or mm -hmm. um, The Omen. I know something about the religious connection was like, yeah. uh, you know, and demons. And then when Demon Knight came along, um, that was, that was, it's a different thing to be in the movie because it's an acting, it, it's, it's an acting problem. It's a, it's a, you know, it's part of your craft. It's part of your art. It's what you do. So you, I, I approach horror, you know, so-called horror movies, um, like The Mist or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't look at them any differently than if it were a drama or you know a romantic state. It's, it's just a, it's a story, and you, my, my philosophy has always been, if you make it as believable as you can. Okay. The more the more believable you can make what you do in the film, the more people will get sucked in, <laughs> and they'll come they'll come along for the ride. If they if they can believe that guy in that situation, they'll come along for the ride. You can you can then you know take them to outer space. You can <laughs> you can introduce monsters outside of the grocery store. You can. You know, you can you can take them anywhere, but it all goes. But it all starts with, you know, find find someone believable to play. Find, yeah, exactly. you know, find the truth in this guy, and so. Anyway, that's that's just an acting thing, but yeah, I guess my favorite horror movies. Um, I guess I like the Dawn Till Dusk. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, I really like, I, I, I'm more a fan of the, um, well, like I said, The Exorcist and The mm -hmm. Omen, things like that. Yeah. But also um, the thrillers, like the, um, I mean, going back to Hitchcock and, oh, and people, like, people like that who could scare the daylights out of you. Mm -hmm. And, but they did it. They never showed you the monster, you know, they never, um it was all it was all in the way they told the story and, you know had you on the edge of your seat like oh my god she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna see it she's gonna see it you know um, um i don't know i'm a i'm a fan i've always been a fan of those sorts of films nice nice wait wait until dark i think is the is it wait until dark yeah the one Alan Arkin, um, the blind, the blind woman. She doesn't know he's in the room, and oh. or he he she knows he's coming, and she goes around and breaks all. She's blind, and she breaks yeah. all the lights in the in the apartment. Oh, and she wow. forgets to do the refrigerator, so he can. 
it's just like that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> it's just good writing, you know. That, yeah, I exactly. Guess, I guess at the end of the day, it's just good writing. <laughs> um, the one of the shows that I I loved was Tales Tales from the Crypt, and I I read that you were in like the very first. The, the very first show, right? Yeah. That like, how did that, how did that happen? Like, how did that come about? And like, you're just starting the show called Tales from the Crypt. Like, it's crazy. That was a funny. Well, it was actually a weird. Uh, um, it was a weird situation. I was in Los Angeles, and I got I, they sent me in to audition for the series for the for. They started with the first three episodes. Okay. And. That's how, that's how they launched the series. They cast, they were going to do these three episodes and see how it went. And um, they had me come in and read for uh, the cop at the end of the first episode who uh, arrests Niles Talbot, the, the executioner, the man who was death. And, uh, and all, his, all his whole entire role was, uh, you, Mr. Talbot, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say, blah, blah, blah. that's it. That was it. The Miranda rights. <laughs> and uh, I and I read it. I finished reading it. And um, Karen Ray was the casting woman on it. Uh, I said to her, I said, what's, what's the deal with Talbot, with the role of the executioner, right? Yeah. Who gets laid off and he goes and kills people. And she said, well, they're, they, they're looking for a name. They want a name. Uh, so they're going to go with, you know, John Malkovich or, you know, somebody like Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a, a, a someone with a name, and I didn't have a name. Um, and I said, ah, <laughs> okay. And I left, and I got halfway across the parking lot at, at Fox, and uh, she stuck her head out the window and said, Bill, come back. Uh, and she gave me the sides, the pages, and said, come back on Monday. I'll put you on tape. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Right? Say, but, greet, you know, slick your hair down or, you know, black, black out your teeth or something because you're just, you're, you know, you're too young looking. You're too cute. So I came back on Monday, and I did this guy, this uh, Talbot, uh, Talbot, and Niles Talbot talks right into the lens, the whole show. He looks right at the camera and says, mm -hmm. I like electricity. You know, it's clean. It's not like lethal injection. You know, it's not like, it's, that's how you kill a dog or a cat. But, and, he's, and he's got this great, like, warped freaking sense of humor. <laughs> but, you know, he's just, um, anyway, so I did it. Uh, and, Lo and behold, the producers looked at it and they said, that's the guy, that's the guy, that's him. Um, so I did it. And then it was, it was great. It was the very first episode. It was The Man Who Was Death and it was nominated for Ace Awards and all because mm -hmm. of this stuff. The very next thing that uh, Joel Silver did, he was one of the producers on it, was uh, Die Hard 2. Oh, wow. And they just called called and said, would you like to do, <laughs> would you like to play the villain in Die Hard 2? Oh, yes. yes. Yes, thank you. But it came out of that, it came out of that show. It came out of the Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> um, and then another year or two later, um, um, Walter Hill, who directed that episode, mm -hmm directed uh, Trespass okay. with, uh, with um, Ice-T and Ice Cube. And, um, and uh, it was, uh, and, and again, th there was no audition that just, yeah. would you like to do that? And one of the writers on Tales from the Crypt was Frank Darabont, who a, a year or so later said, I'm going to do this movie called The Shawshank Redemption. Would you like to do, mm. I'd love you to be in that. So um, it, 
a lot, a lot of things just sort of sprouted out of that one moment. Wow, uh, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at the end of the at the end of the day, though, it, it, it's horrible. And it's a, I mean, it's the tales from the crypt is you know, it's horror and it's blood and it's guts yeah. and yeah. splatter. But at the end of the day, it's like you, I, I don't, you don't play them any differently. You go, you know, you. You know, just because just because that's what it is, you don't forget how to act. You mm -hmm. don't forget you know, how to create a character, or you know. Yeah, I don't look down at those things. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, like by by being in that, like many many years down the road, you came back for the Ultimate Crypt with with Dean. Demon, Demon like I, the movie, yeah. And, I know. Uh, Which was great, great fun. That, that, that was, was also one of my favorite horror movies. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. It was, yeah, I was. It was funny too because it. I don't think it. It made its money back, or maybe it mm -hmm. doubled its money or something. Um, but there were supposed to be three movies. It was that one, Bordello of Blood, and yes. and one other one, and. Um, I don't know. The movie opened in the theaters and it had a little run and then it just sort of disappeared and it got forgotten about for the longest time. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and it seemed, <laughs> except people didn't forget about it. It just kept kind of growing and people kept discovering it. And yeah, saying, yeah. Holy crap, this is fun. Look at Billy Zane. Look yeah. at Billy Zane. Look at Billy Zane. You know? I mean, Look at that cat. CCH Pounder, you know, <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Church. How do you get that group of people together again? I for, know. You know, for love or money, you can't. I know, exactly. And uh, it, that was good fun. Jaden, Jaden Smith was the lead, right? Jada Pinkett. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Before she was Jada Pinkett Smith. That's true. That's true, yeah. But that was good. That was really, that was really, really fun to shoot. That was, I had a, I had a ball. That's one of those ones where I grew up on a farm uh, outside of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and my friend from down the road, we had BB guns and we would dive out of the hayloft in the barn with our BB guns and come up shooting and look out behind you. You know, we just like, <laughs> you know, co constantly doing battle with imaginary Germans, or whatever, you know, um, and, th and it all, and then all of a sudden there I am at, th you know, 30 something of whatever, however old I was. Um, and you get to do it like for real, yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I feel like it's one of those things where you feel like you've been rehearsing for it you know, since we were eight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, look out, <laughs> duck. <laughs> oh, anyways. Anyways. Yeah, like that, that movie was, was so good. I was like, I said, that's one of, that's one of my best demon though. Yeah. And like everything about it was, was pretty wild. Like you really, like, your, your character was carrying the blood of Christ and, that's how he was able to fight off all the evil and the demons and Billy Zane was yeah. the head demon. And... It was funny. I was watching reviews of that the other night. Um, there are a, bunch, a lot of people have reviewed it on mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, after all these years, they've like discovered it <laughs> again. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's fascinating. Again, it's that thing of, um, you know the religion, yeah. The blood—it's the blood of Christ. Yeah. It's the—it's that's the good. The battle between good and evil mm -hmm. um, has a, has a resonance with the audience. You know, don't look at it too close, but <laughs> <laughs> don't pick don't pick apart the logic too much. Yeah, exactly. But, but God, God is on the good side, yeah. and, and Billy Zane is on the bad side. 
that's true. Um, anyway, and uh, yes, that was fun to do. <laughs> Another show that I I really liked. I watched every single one was was Roz Roz Roswell, and um, how how out of out of all the out of all the scenes you shot for the for the series like what what scene do you think was your best one to shoot like one you had the most fun with for some reason the one that the one that sticks out in my mind um there were there were lots of fun moments um like when um well, like in the very beginning when I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on the trail of these aliens. Mm -hmm. If I, if I discover this, if I discover the big secret, they're screwed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the show is over because I'll turn them into, you know, the FBI or whatever mm -hmm. until the day, until the, until my son gets shot at the end of the first year like that whole year i'm the biggest problem they have is if jim valenti gets wind of who we are we're we're done yeah. and and then kyle uh, my my son gets shot and uh and this is great and this is a really great moment when max decides to save kyle's life yeah. do that magic trick with his hand yeah, and re and reveal to Sheriff Valenti who he is, mm. you know, and the whole thing just flips over. I can't, I can no longer be the antagonist. I, now I have to protect these guys and the whole second, well, the second and the third year I'm protecting them mm -hmm. uh, going, going forward. But I, that was a really, that was a fun moment. That was a really, kind of an exciting bit. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to, there was a moment, there was a, there was a scene with me and Kyle were sitting on a couch eating ice cream together. That was, <laughs> that as I recall was, was, that was good fun. Um, I, I don't know, that's, it was a long time ago. <laughs> And after doing that show and everything, like, what are your, what are your thoughts on how how everyone says, you know, there's there's life out there other than our life, like other forms of aliens and all. Like, do you do you think there's other forms of life out out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are billions and billions and billions of stars, mm -hmm. um, and most of them have solar systems around them of planets. It's the, the odds that there are other planets that could have uh, um, supported life. I mean, there have to be. Oh yeah. They think Mars might have supported life at one time because there's evidence that there may have been water on the surface of Mars at one time. Heard that. But, yeah. but it's just like, you can't, you can't have that many opportunities um for it to happen if it happened here it you know um it can't be the only place that it happened if there are like exactly. billion, if there are billions of other places like earth that have water and oxygen and what have you um it's really a kind of a numbers game there mm. has to be there has to be life out there Oh, oh, yeah, like I, I, so I, I feel that, like that too, yeah. And what I, I don't know what f you know form exactly, mm -hmm. but uh, we've only been, you know, humans have only been kicking around for maybe you know, the ice age was like ten thousand years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we came out of the caves, and we've come <laughs> quite, we've come quite a long ways in ten thousand years, but yeah, that's true. but what if? But what if there are planets out there that, you know, have centuries and centuries of development mm -hmm. and the technology, I mean, it's not at all impossible to imagine that the technology, um, once they have, once they've discovered technology, 
and now they have centuries to play with it and it's not at all hard to imagine that they have they can travel they can you know um i mean what's hard to imagine is what they can't do what they <laughs> yeah, yeah so i don't know that we've been visited by anybody yeah um, that's another question it's a really it's a really big universe out there. Yeah. and you know that that's pretty arrogant to think that we're the center of it <laughs> you know <laughs> i have a feeling if they have the technology to travel the light you know millions of light years and find us just to find us um that if they have, if they're so advanced that they can travel distances like that, we must look like a herd of antelope or something, you know, <laughs> we like earthworms or something to them. <laughs> look at these interesting uh, creatures. They have, they have, you know, it's like a pack of wild dogs or something. Well, there's a, they, they vote and they have a hierarchy and they do all of these tricks. <laughs> You know. Anyway, yeah, I think there's life out there. Okay, <laughs> that's that's you can, take, you can take that to the bank. <laughs> how how did how did you get the call? How did everything happen for you to come back and play Death again in the the new Bill and Ted film? Um, they called me. They, um, <laughs> well, first I did, first I did the other Bill and Ted movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Bogus Journey mm -hmm. 30 years ago, and that was good. That was funny. I don't get a chance to be funny very often, but <laughs> when I get a chance to be funny, it's always good. Um, cause I am funny. Um, you know, when I'm not being an asshole motherfucker, you know, stab stab them in the eye with an ice pick um, <laughs> but i yeah after bogus journey um i i just sort of gave i i thought well it'd be great if we came if we did more you know i i love the character mm -hmm. i thought he was he was really fun to play um uh, but then I didn't hear anything and a decade went by and then another decade went by and then another decade went by. And finally I heard from one of the writers on the show, um, wrote to me and said, we're writing a, a script for the third, for a third uh, Bill and Ted. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be in it? You know, um, if we write, if we write death a role in it, would you like to play it again? Yeah. And of course, and I said, yes, of course. So, pfft, no, get out of here. <laughs> um, so they did. They, you know, they wrote him in. <laughs> um, and, uh, and there he was. They picked <laughs> up where the, they picked up where we left off, I guess. We had had a big falling out. Mm -hmm. uh, me and the wild stallions. <laughs> It was those 40 minute bass solos. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which, which will, that'll break up any band, you know. <laughs> the guy just won't stop playing the bass, man. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, that, that's, how it, that's how it occurred. Okay. They wrote him in and asked me if I would do it, and I said I would. So, so I did, Hell. and I was amazed. I was, again, I was, uh, uh, it was, it was surprising. It was really su amazing re to see how many people remembered the oh, yeah. first two movies and how much they liked them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that by, there was so much anticipation about, oh my God, there's gonna be a third one. Oh my God, oh, oh, oh. I remember that when I was in high school or I remember, yeah, yeah. you know, I was in college when that, you know, um, my dad took me to that one and I loved it. And so, 
So, and I thought it, I thought it worked pretty well. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but it, I thought Face the Music was, uh, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I thought it served, it served the, you know, it didn't try to do too much and it's sort of, it's, I, I kind of felt like it put a nice uh, end cap on the, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it showed Bill and Ted when they're ancient, you know, on their deathbeds, they're still rocking. Um, I thought it was perfect. <laughs> how, how, how was it like seeing, seeing them again? That like, was remarkable. That was remarkable. We haven't, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was a little apprehensive. I didn't know, you know, how, um, you know, what it would be like to, after 30 years. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, but what was, what was really, what was really fun was get into the makeup and the, the makeup and the robes and the accent and the character and all the rest of it. And we met on the sound stage to shoot the, you know, to start filming. And as soon, it was like, as soon as they yelled action, um, it, it just, everything just sort of fell into place. It was like, we never stopped, you know, it was like, uh, the same energy was there. The same, nice. they were, they were the same guys. <laughs> oh, come on, death, dude. <laughs> you know, and, and he was the same cranky, you know, <laughs> I was seen the groove. Um, I, 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 it was great fun. It was the energy and the, and the sort of respect that we have for one another, for the actors, just for Alex and Keanu. Mm-hmm. Um, I have tremendous, I have tremendous respect and admiration for them. And they're great. You know, they're, they're not only terrific actors, they're wonderful people. Oh, good. And, and so it was, it was terrific to, we stepped back into those shoes and it was like, bang, you know, 30 years just disappeared. It was like, we shot that thing yesterday. Oh, nice. Know? Yeah, that was good fun. What did you like best about, about playing death? This, this time or in general? Well, you know, have to, I guess this, this time in this film. He got, well, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's funny. He's, I mean, he's, he's funny. He doesn't mean to be funny. He's not, <laughs> he isn't, he is never trying to be funny, he, but he is funny and he's, and he's, he, he's sort of this raw, um, exp- kind of an exposed nerve, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, there's something about the makeup and the character that everything he's feeling just pops right up on his face. He's like, it's like work, it's like a puppy, you know? <laughs> it's like, there's no secrets, you know? I want the food. <laughs> I like belly rubs. Um, they don't like me. Everything, everything he's, uh, that's really what's, I guess, the most fun about playing him is that um, there's nothing small about his feelings or, uh, you know, all of his insecurity, all of his little insecurities and, and petty jealousies and all of that crap, his, you know, um, they're all glaringly obvious. <laughs> They're just like right out there, like billboards. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't hide anything very well. <laughs> and that's and that's re- and that's really kind of fun. <laughs> I remember thinking when I first when I first started playing the character back mm-hmm. in thirty, back in the turn of the century. The uh, I remember thinking the. He starts, it's kind of a perfect, I was a perfect choice for this because he starts out, when you first meet him, he's really scary. Um, he's death. They've been murdered. And they meet death face to face. And he's this black robes, 
and pale and the scythe and he doesn't say anything. You must challenge me to a contest. You know, he's like, whoa, they're in trouble. They're really in trouble. And then the games start. And then when they start playing the games and he starts to lose, then he, then he like, um, best to out of, he starts wiggling and jostling and he's a bet and he's a sore loser and he's petty and his feelings get hurt. And <laughs> <laughs> listen, it was professor plum. I said plum. Uh, says he cheats. <laughs> yeah, he it's like, it was like every, you know, it all falls apart. He's not scary anymore. He's that doofus. <laughs> that you know he's just like everybody else you know <laughs> that was what that's what was real that was what was really funny then he becomes like you know then he wants to be part of the band then he mm -hmm. then he wants to be one of the guys mm -hmm. and um so he makes this big journey in the course of the movie no <laughs> But is there is there any is there any other films coming out that was put on hold because of how you know how the world is? <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a there's one called Shrine. I hope that's still the name of it. Okay. Again, it's it's a hor it's and that is a horror film. It's a um it's Screen Gems and Sony Pictures. And we started shooting it last March and then had to stop because, mm -hmm. of, the, uh, because of COVID. And um, they, they managed to, to work uh, in these protocols and testing and PPE and, and scenes where the, there used to be a crowd scene. They got rid of everybody except you. <laughs> And now it, now you're talking on the phone or something, you know. So they made it safe enough to come back for us to all come back and finish the movie last October. Oh, okay. um, so that one's in the can and waiting. It's, I'm guessing it'll come out in the summer sometime. Oh, okay. Um, hard, again, um, a, a one of the kind of along those religious lines, it has... It's got those religious hooks, you know? I play a priest. Nice, nice. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you what happens to him. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to see the movie. I mean, definitely, yeah. I, I, I'm a big horror fan, so, you know, any new horrors that come out, I'll go see it. There you go, <laughs> Shrine. Okay. Could be great. It's a great script. It's a great idea. Um, and I don't even know how to describe what happens in it. There's a, there's a spirit that was, uh, gets released that, mm. um, was, was, shouldn't, shouldn't ever have been opened, was oh, open, nice. was, was unleashed on this little town, this little church, this, this little place. And it looks like miracles are happening, okay. but they're not. <laughs> okay. I, don't want, I don't want to spoil it for you. No, it, it definitely sounds good. Scary is, it's, it's mighty extra scary, I think. Oh, that's awesome. So if you like. <laughs> If you like movies that scare the bejesus out of you, I do, I do. then I highly recommend Sh Shrine. Okay, okay, nice. Um, I since since it's late, I, I don't I don't want to keep you on here long. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> is there anything else you want to push or plug or talk about? Um, let's see. The um, the only other thing that I'm doing right now is I I started making these um, YouTube videos oh. uh, called William Sadler, the Kitchen Tapes. Oh, okay. Which is sort of like 
they're sort of like the basement tapes that Dylan made, except mine are the kitchen tapes. And the, <laughs> cause I made them in the kitchen, but I, uh, I've been writing songs. I've been playing instruments since I was about seven and, um, and writing songs for years and years and years. So I started like performing some of my own songs, mm -hmm. but I also tell stories about behind the scenes stuff that happened in the movies. Um, you know, like the nude scene in Die Hard 2 and how that happened and stuff about Roswell and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, but anyway, it's William Sadler, The Kitchen Tapes, if you right. care to, if you care to check it out. Um, yeah. I, plan, I plan to make some more. I think I've got like nine or ten of them up now. Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. Well, all anyway. right wow there you go yeah yeah <laughs> definitely definitely gonna definitely gonna watch that thank you that'd be great yeah i am i have an album i think i'm gonna have an album coming out one of these days okay i, I know it, it's and it's always awful i think about like william shatner putting out an album and leonard nimoy putting out an album <laughs> and I, I don't really like it when actors put out an album but I think mine is, I think mine's going to be different. All right. Okay. Because the songs are funny and the songs are, yeah, some of them, are, some of them are funny and some of them mm -hmm. are sweet, but they're, I think people would be surprised. They're not, uh, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Just check them out. Yeah, definitely, man. There you go. Um, all right. Thank you so so much for uh, taking taking time out of your night. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. My <laughs> pleasure. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sit on the couch for a while. <laughs> nice talking to you, Rocky. Yeah, definitely, man. Thank you. Thank you again for joining joining me on Groot tonight. My pleasure. My pleasure. Stay safe. All right, buddy. You you too. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night, man. All right. You too. <laughs> okay. Bye.